Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great today. Okay, so I have a video that I'd like us to watch and right after that, I will share my two cents on why I wanted you to see this video at this time. Take a look. Ugochuku Ekwem, the general overseer of Christ Living Hope Church, has been trending after news broke out that he was arrested by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency for smuggling 54 sticks of cannabis that were found wrapped around his body. The spokesperson for the NDLA said the pastor was apprehended at the Lagos Malta Mohammed International Airport on March 7th while on his way to Kenya for a three-week-long crusade. The pastor has been quite popular owing to his preaching techniques, especially during deliverance. Let's take a quick look at one of his crusades. <laughs> Stand up, stand up, all of you. Stand up, all of you. Give me your hands, all of you. Come, 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 run to me. Take it. Jesus. So, if you have been active in the media, especially on social media, you must have seen countless similar videos from these imposters who claim to be servants of God. If you have followed me long enough, you must have seen one or two or three videos I have done in the past to expose these guys. So now we're even tired of exposing them because they stand exposed by default. When you see the things they do, you can only conclude that the people who still listen to them and follow them are people who need to be delivered, who need to be rescued by all means possible. They are not normal, they are not okay, and I'm sorry to say this, my sincere apologies. I don't like labeling people, but to be honest with you, if you follow men who do stuff like this, you are not okay, you need help. I'm, I'm serious about this. Now, why am I paying attention to this video when there are even worse? And when I say worse, I mean worse. There's one that I saw recently. It was one of these criminals, actually, who got a pregnant woman into her own matrimonial home in her own bedroom where she sleeps with the husband to light candles around with incense and all that nonsense and then sleep with him. This criminal was going to ritually violate someone's wife who was heavily pregnant in the name of religion and spirituality in the name of prophetic injunction i see these things every day my heart is burning because from day one i have been profiling these guys hoping that someone out there will at least Listen and be advised. From the days of my pastor said we should eat grasses and they went on ground and began to eat grasses to all these ones now that are having children with their deacon's wives and their pastor's wives and they are prophets. You call them papa, daddy and they never have their real names. It's always one concocted name from somewhere and they always almost look alike, all of them. 99.9% .9 of them are occultists who have sold their souls to the devil. Mark my words, quote me anytime, any day. I have had serious encounters with these people. I'm not joking. I'm saying this because I have this incredible burden in my spirit to 
actually wake people up. Because people are now sleeping on mass. It's almost like they just blew something in the air and our people have gone into some type of psychosomatic slumber. Unable to wake up into consciousness anymore. Why? What happened to your Bible? You can't read them anymore. You forgot all the places where the Bible talked about false prophets and false preachers and how to know them. Why? Why? You don't remember the scriptures again? There are too many of them. They are in New Testament. They are in Old Testament. God warned us. Matthew 7, 22, the Bible says, Oh, on that day they will come to me and say, Master, did we not heal the sick in your name? Did we not do this in your name? Even raise the dead. He said, I will tell them, away from me, you evil doers, for I know not who you are. Can you imagine someone who healed the sick in the name of Jesus? Who commanded headache to disappear in the name of Jesus? Who even raised dead in the name of Jesus? Can you imagine such a person? Christ said he will look at that person and say, I don't even know you, sir. Excuse me, who are you? Like he doesn't even know their name at all. But it's on record that they healed in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. Because it's a name that is given unto man above all the name, at mention of which every name must bow. It doesn't matter who is mentioning it. But you get carried away by the fact that somebody is doing some gymnastic displays in the church, dramatizing. This is my world, Nollywood. We, we dramatize, we make believe. That's what these guys are doing. And you believe it. You believe it. Oh, he just healed somebody. But the Bible, go read your own Bible. Matthew 7, 22, it's there. That they will say in the name of Jesus, demons will go out. But yet, he says, I don't know who they are. Because by their fruits, it is not by this nonsense drama they do. It is the fruits they bear. How do they relate to people based on morality? How do they relate to people based on sincerity? How do they relate to people based on integrity? How? You are not looking at all those parameters and all those yardsticks. You are looking at things that don't make sense. You're using these things to judge them. How can you use drama to judge somebody when the right parameters and the yardsticks are there for you? Check the character of your pastor, your papa, your preacher, your prophet, your whatever you call them. Check the character. Because it is the fruit that will determine whether you belong to the fold or not. It is not the drama. It is not the drama. What has happened to us? There's one that will sit down and be running oil or water on his face and then he'll be falling on the people. There's one that will even strip a woman naked and there are too many of them in Ghana and all these places. You strip a woman naked and you say you want to do what? You want to pray for breath or pray. What is wrong? You humans, what is wrong? Because you are trying to, you're trying to look for a shorter cut. You're looking for a shortcut to your destiny. There are no shortcuts to the top. Take this word from me today. There are no short... You see, whenever you are looking for a shortcut to the top, you end up with these demons who are manifested in human form. These are demons. They are not men of God who are tempted to do evil. They are the temptation themselves. I don't know if you heard me right. You know, a true man of God or child of God could be tempted to do something wrong. But this is not who these ones are. When they sleep with people, it is a ritual. They are making sacrifices. When they are calling for offering of money, they are duping you intentionally. So they themselves are the embodiment of temptation. They are the quintessences of temptation. They are not being tempted. They are the temptation. 
That's what is going on. That's why the one that was going to sleep with somebody's wife whose tummy was so big, almost seven to eight months pregnant, what do you think he was about to do? He was going to sacrifice that child because these demons, they thrive in child and ritual sacrifices. And yet, they come to you and say, I am a child of God. You say, leave his character alone. It's only between him and God. He carries your little baby girl, 13 year old, 14, and rapes the child and disvirgins the child and uses the blood of that disvirginity to go and carry out his satanic ritual sacrifices so he can become famous and get more members. And you say, that's between him. Don't talk against the anointed of God. You need help. You need serious help. I'm serious. You need help. You need more help than the guy himself. I'll read you a few scriptures. There are too many. I'll read you three scriptures. Paraphrased version of these three scriptures. One is Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 9. The other one is Jeremiah 14 14. The other one is Jeremiah 23 16. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 9 paraphrased. It says, My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. They will not belong to the council of my people or be listed in the records of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Punishment is coming for them. Which is why I'm making this video. Because their time is up. Punishment is coming. You will see with your eyes. This is Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 14. It says, Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds delusions of their own minds, lies that have nothing to do with God. This is Ezekiel, Old Testament. I have not sent them, and yet they are doing it, and you are believing it because you have not the Spirit of God in you. Jeremiah 23, 16, he said, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. False hopes. Talk about false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. False hopes. They tell you, don't worry. This shortcut will lead you to the top. And then you are moving up and down past margarine that I am going to get to the top through the back door. Look at all these guys who are toiling and going through the process. They don't even know what I know. I'm going to go through the back. You can not get to the top they are only going to milk you dry and by the time they are done you are dumped on the wayside and you still have to start from the beginning you have to enter the process and trust God through the process there is a process to every journey of destiny there is a principle and there are precepts that guide every sphere and aspect of this life you must understand this and let it sink deep down in your brain so you don't become a guinea pig for a propaganda machine as we see too many of them all over the place today. They are brainwashing and brain damaging so many of you and it beats my imagination as to how human beings can sit down and listen to these guys. Very incoherent living animals and you listen to them and you believe the rubbish that they are spewing. It makes no sense. There are no shortcuts to the top, my beloved people. Let's wake up. You know, we have for far too long ignored all these things. And I have this troubling in my spirit that we need to stop ignoring these things. Because there are too many innocent people who are getting caught in the web of these lies and manipulations of Satan every blessed day. 
And if we don't speak up, if we don't take action, their blood will be on our heads. Those of us who know, who are free from this wickedness, should speak up. This is what happened to David Koresh. This is what happened in Guyana tragedy. They gathered all these people, brainwashed them, told them you need to go and drink cyanide, drink acid. We are going to heaven. And the people did it and died. There's another one that happened. Oh, we are going to go to heaven tonight. They went and set themselves on fire and they all disappeared. There are many. What about the one recently that they said that they had to pay $100 so they can go to heaven, a ticket to heaven. There is no amount of delusion, grandiose that we have not witnessed in this time. And yet, as they are being exposed, you are still falling victim. Who are you? You are the person I'm making this video for today. If you are in such a place, can we walk back to the scripture and know what the Bible says? It says, by their fruits, not by their dramatis extraordinaire, but by their fruits, we shall know them. What fruit are you manifesting? What fruit is your pastor manifesting? What is he doing? Don't say, follow my words, don't follow my actions. It's a lie. We want to know your action. We want to follow your action. If you, I'm not a pastor, you see? I'm not a pastor, I'm not a prophet, I'm nothing. I'm a normal guy. But if I decide to become a pastor today, the standard to which we hold me will be like skyscraper. Because with every single title or leadership position comes a huge sense of responsibility. Why are they not owning up? Because they are demons. They are devil incarnate. You know what they are doing? I've said this in one of my videos in the past. What they are doing is almost like let me give you this analogy where, for instance, my dad, okay, he's a very wealthy man. He has this mighty business that has grown so big and then we sell franchises to people, right? And these criminals come to us and they buy our franchise and all we do is healthy food, yeah? Healthy. Just like you have Subway. Our own is called King Subs. When we let them buy our franchise, they go out there and set up their stores. After setting it up for them, our signboard is out there in the open everywhere. Everybody knows, oh my gosh, King Subs, I want to go eat King Subs. But then when the people come into there to buy the King Subs, what do they find? They find very unhealthy things that have nothing to do with King Subs. So you use our signboard to attract the people. You let them know that this place is the same King Subs they know, which is known for healthy food. But when they come in, you trap them in there and serve them on healthy food. That is criminal. That is criminal. And that is what these guys are doing on a daily basis. we got to begin to call them out for who they are. All this drama needs to end. Let's begin to focus on principles. Focus on principles. Focus on principles. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. If you have faith in God, work hard. God will bless the works of your hand and take you to where you belong. Stop looking for shortcuts to the top. I am a living testimony. I tried it in the past. It did not work. Everyone I know who had tried it, they all came back bleeding so badly. Stop letting anyone deceive you with lies that would never stand the test of time. You cannot access your destiny or the top through a shortcut. You must go through the process. If you trust God through that process, you will see a light at the end of the tunnel of that process. This is reality. And we need to own it. Make it ours. And my prayer today is that God would deliver us from these children of Satan that are now everywhere. In fact, they are even more in number than the real worshippers of the true God. 
But no matter what happens, we have been warned already that in this time, in this end time, that there will be a proliferation of their shops, which they call churches. There will be a proliferation of their manipulation centers. And we have seen it with our eyes. But many have forgotten that we actually are living in that end time. That's why we didn't take notice. But I'm telling you now afresh. I've said it before. I'm saying it again. You are living in that time and that's why they're, they are not the ones that God wants you to have anything to do with. These are fake. These are not real. Get out of that place. When you walk into a church and the only reason why you're there is because of the way they dramatize and tell somebody, oh, I know the color of your boxer. I know that this morning you wore a blue pant and later you changed and wore a red pant. Oh, man of God, you are right. Hey, daddy, that is true. If that is why you're there, get out. Go read your Bible and build a personal relationship with your God. It will do you more good than the harm you are subjected to under this Satan incarnate. May God help you, protect you, and protect you and your family. And may all the contamination that you may have received from these places be completely neutralized by the blood of the Lamb. And may you be free and free for good. God bless you.